Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for this webinar on our new acute care PT residency program at Stanford HealthCare. This program is long overdue, and we hope that you are just as excited as we are to get this program started. My name is Lauren, and I am a physical therapist at Stanford HealthCare, residency clinical specialist, and the director of our developing acute care PT residency program. This webinar is meant to be for informational purposes and to give a general overview of what the residency year will look like and hopefully inspire you to apply to our program. Here is what we hope you will get out of this presentation today. We will introduce you to the program mission, admission requirements, program timeline, sample weekly residency schedule, application and interview timelines, and discuss some common themes and questions that have come up from prospective candidates. I included this picture to show just the immense breadth and reach that Stanford Healthcare has for the communities in the Bay Area and throughout many parts of Northern California. As you can see illustrated here, these are all the various locations that comprise the Stanford Healthcare Alliance, including multiple hospital campuses, outpatient services, and satellite clinics. In addition to the healthcare network, Stanford is of course affiliated with the university and graduate school campuses located in Palo Alto, California. In addition to providing care for communities in the Bay Area and throughout Northern California, it is important to note that we have people come from all over the world to receive the specialized care and services we provide at Stanford HealthCare. Although Stanford has many clinics and locations, the location for our residency program will be at the main medical campus in Palo Alto, California. Now, this list is a very short list of the many accolades and distinguishments of Stanford HealthCare, but just to name a few, this is a dynamic academic medical center that also includes Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. This residency program will only cover the adult populations. Being that Stanford is a teaching hospital, you have the opportunity to interact with professional adult learners who are all seeking unparalleled clinical and educational opportunities at Stanford. You will also interact with students who are completing their clinical training. Of note, Stanford HealthCare helps to mentor at least 30 to 50 rehab students per year through a robust student program. Stanford is also a level one trauma center with life flight available for critical cases. We have a world renowned comprehensive cancer center where people come for, spe for very specialized oncology treatments, including bone marrow transplants, immunotherapy, and CAR T therapy. Stanford is also a primary organ transplant hub for Northern California and the Northeast region of the US. This includes heart, lung, liver, and kidney transplants. From a rehab perspective, there is a highly distinguished orthopedic clinical PT residency program at our outpatient center in Redwood City. We did have a geriatric residency program for a few years, but this pro program is no longer active. In any event, Stanford is committed and highly engaged in, reg in residency education. The main medical campus in Palo Alto recently grew and added a brand new state-of-the-art building, which has more than doubled our hospital census. And I will provide a photo at the end of the presentation. In addition, our cancer center is currently undergoing renovations and is reorganizing. There is always so much happening here. So if you are looking for somewhere to grow and to have limitless professional opportunities, this is a great place to achieve that. We included a slide of our program mission in order to illustrate what we hope to achieve and what we hope our resident will receive in participating in a program like this. It is also to illustrate why we are developing the program and what we hope to facilitate through our residents. Our mission statement truly highlights our passion for acute care physical therapy, for pushing clinical practice, and for developing leaders and advanced practitioners in acute care physical therapy. We are looking forward to acute care physical therapy becoming recognized 
as a specialty area of practice with an official board certification in the very near future. Please take a moment to read our mission statement here. So what do you need in order to apply and be accepted into our program? Here are the major requirements you need in order to be considered for admission. You must be a graduate of a CAPTI accredited physical therapy program or secure special permission from the advisory committee. This may mean that if you are a graduate of a foreign PT program, we need to ensure that all of the necessary, all of the necessary requirements are met. This residency program is a post-professional program. So that means that you have to be a current licensed physical therapist in the state of California or a current licensed applicant who has passed the California licensure exam. This includes passing the California jurisprudence exam. Oftentimes, individuals interested in pursuing a residency program are either new grads or newer grads with less than five years of clinical experience. However, this may not necessarily be the case. That being said, if you will be a new grad at the time of application, your acceptance to the program is contingent on you obtaining licensure and or having active PTLA status. You must also be a current member of the APTA and or the Academy of Acute Care PT. You will have required continuing education courses to complete during the residency year, and these professional memberships will enable you to enroll either for free or at a very discounted rate. This also provides you with opportunities for networking and other opportunities within the profession that will enhance your residency year. And if you are a newer grad with five years of experience or less, you are eligible for a great discount on membership fees. And these are reimbursable through Stanford's tuition reimbursement program, which we will discuss later in the presentation. You must also complete an online application for the Stanford Healthcare Acute Care Physical Therapy Residency Program. And there is a little star here because we will talk about how our application process differs from other programs you may be considering. You must provide two letters of recommendation. If you are a newer grad or clinician, we would recommend obtaining letters from a former CI or academic professor. If you have some clinical experience, you may want to ask your current or former employer. If you are considering applying to our program, we highly recommend that you ask for your letters of recommendation sooner rather than later to give you plenty of time prior to the deadline. Once we have compiled all of your application information, we will create an application packet for you and we will initiate a phone screening by the residency program director. This is a pre-interview screening to ask you some questions, get to know you a little bit better, and to set the stage for the formal interview. Once you have completed the phone screening, you will be scheduled for a formal interview with our residency interview committee. This includes around three to five people, including the residency director, leadership from the Department of Rehab, and residency faculty members. The interviews will likely take place over video web conferencing for convenience and scheduling. After the formal interview, we hope to extend offers of acceptance within two weeks. This image here outlines the overview of the entire residency year slated to start in August, 2024, and will span from August to August. As you can see here on the left-hand side of the screen, the program is divided into three trimesters, pink, purple, and blue and there is a written and live patient examination at the end of each trimester as indicated in green. The resident will rotate through each primary service line at the main medical campus and each rotation intentionally varies in length. So for example, the orthotrauma rotation is only six weeks, but cardiopulm and neuro are 10 weeks. The final rotation of the year is reserved for additional experience or mentoring in our ICUs, or it can be used as an elective time period where you can gain experience with some of our other specialty patient populations, such as chronic pain, plastics, or ENT. It can also be an opportunity for you to rotate back to prior service lines that you were interested in gaining a little more experience. 
Please note that the exams include a written exam and a live patient exam with an oral defense, and they will only cover information that is pertinent to that trimester. The resident will have a primary clinical mentor for each rotation, which is one of the immense benefits of completing a residency program. Many of you will likely be new grads this year, and when working in a setting like Stanford, it can be very challenging to obtain the level of mentoring needed to help you achieve professional advancement. The one-to-one -one mentoring that you will receive in this program is really going to take you to the next level in your clinical practice and expertise. This also can be further illustrated in our sample weekly resident schedule on the next slide. So to get really granular here, we are operating on a 40 hour work week, Monday through Friday, from approximately 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. with a rotating weekend component, which will be one every six weekends, which likely won't start for the first one to two months to buffer for orientation timing and to get the program up and running. This schedule is subject to change pending availability of mentors, educational activities, inpatient census, or other varying factors. As you can see as illustrated on the Tuesday of this schedule, there is a full day dedicated up to one-to-one -to -one mentoring with a clinical specialist or advanced clinician who is part of our residency faculty. They are designated per service line. In addition, you will have supplemental didactic courses that correspond with the patient population you are working with. These didactic series are all eligible for CEU credit. Residents also have additional projects and assignments that are mandatory to graduate from this program. This includes case study presentations or M&M presentations, facilitating journal clubs, and completing a capstone presentation that will be submitted at CSM or other PT or rehab conferences. Residents will have weekly time dedicated to work on these projects during the week, probably starting around the third or fourth week of the program as indicated on Wednesdays in this schedule. You will also have opportunities to participate in clinical teaching with our student council committee. Some of these activities include facilitating a mobility or simulation lab, opportunities for students to shadow you in the clinical setting and potentially even as a covering clinical instructor. Other teaching opportunities including, include working with other interprofessional colleagues, such as nursing students, PA students, or providing education at nursing skills labs, to name a few. The remaining days of the week are reserved for patient care, and you will be managing a caseload of patients within the service line you are working with and receiving mentoring. So now that we have provided a general overview of what our program will look like, how do you apply? Since this is our inaugural residency year and due to the limited application window, our program application will not be included in the RFPTCAT centralized application system, but we do hope to be included in subsequent cycles. You should be able to access the job application link through our external careers website link, which is listed here. We also have a residency program website linked here where you can access the job posting. Additional hiring platforms that um, Stanford uses include LinkedIn and Workday. The job posting will indicate that this is an acute care PT residency position and the location is in Palo Alto, California. Our residency program email is listed here and please feel free to send us an email at any time as additional questions arise. And please also share this information with friends or colleagues who you think may be interested in applying to our program. So here are the important dates that you need to remember and please mark your calendars. At the time of this recording, all dates are reflective of our initial residency year slated to start in 2024. So dates may have been updated depending on when you listen to this recording. It is also important to note that these dates may be flexible. We are aiming to have applications open from February 15th 
through April 15th, with interviews starting around the end of April. Offers of acceptance will be extended within two weeks of interview with a target program start date of August 26, 2024. As you can see, this is a very narrow application window. So again, we wanna emphasize the importance of asking for your letters of recommendation now so you are prepared to submit by the deadline. So in addition to all of the other amazing experiences you will have while completing a residency program here, we wanted to highlight some of the other amazing benefits that we offer that we are offering at Stanford. We are offering a competitive salary that is 100% full-time equivalent of an entry-level PT1 position. So as you may or may not know, it is not common for residency programs to offer a salary package like this. It is not uncommon for residency salaries to comprise around 40% to 80% of an entry level salary for any clinical specialty. Our package also includes a retirement plan and full healthcare benefits. We entirely understand and are sensitive to the fact that we are in California, the Bay Area specifically, and cost of living is very expensive. We want to try to help ease that burden as much as possible, especially for those of you who may be relocating from out of the area. We have a very generous continuing education benefit of $2,000 per year that is paid out in reimbursement sums. And this is available after the six month probationary period upon hire. You also may be able to contribute these payments to your student loans. As previously mentioned, professional membership dues are also included in this benefit. We will not be requiring fees or tuition to apply to our program. We wanted to create an equitable admissions process where we can provide an excellent post-professional opportunity for our residents. And we hope to attract the best candidates possible. You will be able to attend CSM in 2025 and the time will be built into your schedule. You may be able to attend other conferences or courses as schedule permits, and if you are meeting the program requirements necessary for graduation. And finally, there may be an opportunity for you to observe a surgery, which not many programs offer. So now that I have presented most of the program overview and information, I wanted to take this time to highlight some common themes that prospective candidates have inquired about. The first question relates to if acute care PT experience is a requirement of the program. The short answer is no. Although it would be helpful for you to have some prior exposure to the acute care hospital setting, we are looking for candidates who are motivated, passionate about acute care, curious about professional growth and development, and who are self-starters who truly take ownership of their post-professional learning experience. If this shines through in your application packet, experience, and your interviews, then this program may be a good fit for you. The next question is how many residents are you looking to accept for your cohort? For our first year, we will be accepting one acute care resident. We want to ensure that we are providing a rich experience for our resident while also ensuring that our curriculum will meet the requirements for national accreditation. We are hopeful that we will be able to grow the cohort in subsequent years. The next question we often get is, can you work another job during residency year? While we understand that everyone has different personal circumstances and you may be considering multiple job prospects during your career, this residency program is a full-time commitment, and it is highly recommended that your dedication to this program is your top priority. Prospective candidates are also interested in the pros and cons of pursuing a residency program. If you were to survey 100 therapists who completed a residency program, I would venture to guess that all of them are so happy they completed a residency program. 
Residencies provide you with accelerated learning experiences that would simply take you longer to achieve if you pursued a conventional career or staff therapist path. Many residency graduates say that one year of residency equates to about five years of experience. In addition, residency programs equip you with the skills and expertise to not only be advanced clinicians and specialists, but also to be able to adapt well in very difficult situations, communicate effectively within all levels of the organization, and empower you to pursue leadership roles within your organization. It is truly an investment in your professional career trajectory. And with that, we thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our presentation. As promised, here is a photo of our brand new state-of-the-art 500P building where you will be spending a lot of time during your residency year. As mentioned earlier, please feel free to send us an email if you have any additional questions that were not addressed in this webinar. Thank you.